point there, Joseph, if you would. And one for Porrick here, too. There you are now, gentlemen. You see you've the poster up about the rates behind the bar? That's Tomas's doing, not mine. But I agree with it. How can we pay our rates when we don't know whether to pay it to the Irish or the British? Well said, Mossy, what a nonsense. Aye. <laughs> Come on, Porrick. We'll drink in the snug. That poster would leave a bad taste in your mouth. <laughs> Fractured. A family, a nation, a dream. August 1921. me. How many times? How many times have I told you not to be playing down by the river? Ten times in my hearing. Everyone is playing there. It's the fun place. A dirty river that sinks up the whole town is not a fun place. Do you want to be sick? Yes. Now, don't be so cheeky. Get upstairs and wash your hands and face and take off those clothes. Daddy. Is that my mall? I thought it was a great big pile of smelly rubbish walking into my pub. It's me. And I might have thrown you out, so I might. I would have shouted out to stop you. She's well able to do that, all right. Thank you, Teresa. Upstairs. Now, Moll. <laughs> I'll count and see how long it takes you, Millie Molly May. Go. One, two, three, four. And oh, that's too long now. <laughs> She's getting cheekier by the day. Mary was never like that. A bit of spirit is no bad thing. I see you have a bit of spirit yourself hidden under your arm. Are you off somewhere? Just to see Paddy. He's been a bit under the weather recently. (laughs) Then he should call on a doctor, not a publican. I'll pass your good wishes on to him, so I will. Mind the fort there now, Tomas. Bye now, Teresa. If I was lying dead in the bed upstairs, he'd hardly notice... But Paddy is under the weather and he goes running off to him. He'd notice when the decomposition starts. What? Decomposition starts within a few hours of death. It's worse in warm weather. If you were dead in the bed... What was it you wanted, Teresa? Bartholomew has run off again. I think there's a bit of jealousy there with Sissy's baby. I've a notice here describing him with details on how he is to be returned should he be found. Can you hang it up for me? Tomas, take care of that, will you? Hand it over there, Theresa, and I'll put it up. Slap bang beside the rates poster. I don't know why we have that rates poster up at all. Loads of nonsense. If you pay rates to the British, the Irish come after you. If you pay the Irish, the British come after you. You're supposed to pay the Irish, Mammy. There now, Theresa. Is that all right for you? And what are they doing with our rates? Not cleaning rivers, that's for sure. The poster is excellently positioned, Tomas. And Bridget... The rivers are to be cleaned. They discovered it's all the shit coming out of the college that's causing the problem. (laughs) God forgive you, Teresa, for saying such a thing. And you, Tomas, for laughing. It's priests and holy people above in the college. It was reported in the paper. Let me try to remember now. It said, there's a large amount, that was the pollution, running from the college. But so far, the district council have been afraid to approach St. Patrick's College Maynooth. They have been asked to have a certain amount of work done, but have never done it. I can't believe that. Priests and bishops pollute in our river. They use the toilet same as anybody else. <laughs> we think we should be on our knees giving thanks that Maynooth has a better class of pollution than the average town. And maybe Mal has the right idea playing down there. May God forgive you. You're worse than your father. That's blasphemous talk. Mal, I'm coming up now. Ready or not? What you said wasn't blasphemous. A better class of pollution is a compliment. Aye. Theresa, I've been meaning... Uh, Though I would say it is an inaccurate statement. Excrement is excrement, no matter what way you look at it. (laughs) Aye. I'd be on my way. Ah, now stay. Have a drink. I have a cat to look for. A drink to fortify your search. And besides, I'd really like to get to know you, Theresa. It's not convenient. 
I hear your talk the other week on taking care of gunshot wounds is very informative. That was four months ago. I've given talks on bandaging severed limbs, recognising shell shock and how to keep your cat happy since then. I've also changed a few nappies and been on stage. And you are excellent, Teresa. I, I was just... I so- was. Except my talk on how to keep your cat happy seems not to have resonated with Bartholomew. Well, maybe your cat just has places to be. Teresa, you seem like... What places? He has a cosy basket. Good scraps from the table. A toy I made him. Where would he get better? I'd move in with you myself. No, thank you. I have enough. I'll be off. Uh, Don't go. (laughs) I hardly ever get a chance to chat with you, Teresa. That's because we have nothing to chat about. I'm sure we could find something. Mammy's always saying what great fun she has with you. She did say she enjoyed my talk on bullet wounds. There you go. She gave me a round of applause at the end. She loved that talk. It was educational, informative and entertaining. All necessary ingredients for a lecture. Did you know, for instance, Tomas, that if a bullet enters the head and bounces around, the damage formed is so bad because there's no room for the brain to move and the shock waves from the bullet bouncing around can cause irreversible damage? Uh, no. That's what the RIC lad back in February died from. A bullet in the head. I met him once. Look, I... He refused to look for my cat. Did he? If Bartholomew had gone in with a gun in his paw and robbed the station, he'd look for him quick enough. I remember thinking that at the time. Do you not like the RIC, Teresa? I didn't think much of them that day. And what about the volunteers? They were worse. They laughed. They said they had better things to be doing than looking for my cat. But, in general, forgetting about the cat, what do you think about the volunteers? I can't forget about the cat. Do you agree with what the volunteers and IRA are doing otherwise? Blowing things up and shooting people in the head and destroying the roads. They're doing it for Ireland, don't you think? I have no idea why they're doing it. I'll have a whiskey. Sorry? With a drop of water. I might need a drink if I'm to keep talking to you. And a fine drink it is too. I first had it back in 1890, after all the sheep were sheared on my father's farm. Very nice. I was eight. Been drinking it ever since. Eight? Very young to be holding down a sheep, I know. I got kicked in the head 22 times. Have you ever been kicked in the head? No. It is not a pleasant experience. There's the initial shock, of course. One is stunned. And it depends where the kick has landed as to how stunned one is. And a kick from an animal is very different to a kick from a human. I didn't know. Oh, yes. Say, for instance, a sheep. It has a particular kind of hoof. If it kicks you with the edge of the hoof, that's very painful. That happened to me 16 times out of the 22. The other six times, the animal kicked me with the whole hoof, which is not as painful. Now, a kick from a man would depend on the size of his foot and his strength. A weedy lad like yourself, I imagine, or wouldn't be able to do much damage, but a fine lad like your brother, Sean. Now, there's a kick in the head I would not like to get. I see. Teresa... It's a very interesting subject. Oh, it is. You can uh, calculate with mathematics the force of any given kick. Did you know that? No. Can we go back to the... The amount of damage done is the amount of energy absorbed and dissipated by the receiving body. And whether it is localised or not. Take, for instance, that soldier who was shot in February. Uh, Let's not take that. All right. Well, just say you were to kick me in the head. But I wouldn't. I know that. It's an example. So, I'm on the ground and you lift up your foot and you're quite angry and you smash your foot into my skull. Have you got that? Can we talk about that? The amount of damage you do is caused by the force of your foot. Can we agree on that? Yes, but... The formula for the damage done, we'll call it force, is measured as the mass of your foot by the acceleration of your foot. You're a font of knowledge, Theresa. No doubt about that. Now, I was wondering if... What else can I tell you so you can get to know me? Maybe I could ask you questions. Oh, that would certainly speed things up. Maybe I ask you one and you ask me. That way we're equal. Right. I'll go first, as I told you about the sheep on the farm and about the whiskey and about calculating force. So, is it true what the whole town is saying, that you and Lizzie O'Neill are courting? Jesus. True or not? The whole town? 81% of it, certainly. Well... 
I wouldn't say courting. So no. Well, uh, no. (sighs) Yes. Your turn. If I asked you to memorise a series of random letters, could you do it? That's a very peculiar question. But yes. All right. Just a second. Just one second. I have to just get... Ah, yes. One pen. One page. Me now. What do you think of the colour red? That it's bright and cheerful. Me now. Can you memorise this? Technically, red can be many shades. There's scarlet and crimson, cerise and magenta, maroon, carmine, claret, burgundy, as well as carnelian and cherry and cardinal. Not all bright. My next question was to be if you're a bit narrow thinking, but sure, I know the answer to that now. Here's your paperback. 43256W. F G H I T Y V L P three four six two three G H four T nine G O W eight six seven B G F R E. That's amazing. Oh, that's only a handful. There's Imperial, Ruby, Spanish, Indian, Rus. I mean about memorizing the letters. Hmm. My question. Do you like cats? Love them. My question. Do you think you'd like to do some memorising for the IRA? No. My question. What particular cats do you like? Ones like yours, black and white. My question. Why wouldn't you like to memorise for the IRA? Because neither they nor the RIC would look for my Bartholomew last year. I told you that. My question. Is it fluffy black and white cats you like or smooth haired black and white cats? Um, The smooth ones. Uh, my question. Would you do some memorising for me? Yes. My question. Yes? I haven't asked it yet. I wouldn't go rushing saying yes until you've heard it. Do you like any other animals besides cats? No, just cats. My question, if I came to you and asked you to memorise something and then go and pass it on, would you? That's very vague. My question. If I gave you some numbers to memorise, would you pass it on to a man in Dublin if I gave you the train fare up? No. My question. Would you help someone in need? Yes. My question, why wouldn't you go to Dublin? There was no mention of a return fare. My question, is there anyone you wouldn't help? I'd help everyone. My question, if I gave you the train fare there and back, a map of where to meet a man and a detailed description, would you memorise numbers and deliver them? Yes. My question, will you look for Bartholomew with me if I asked? I would. My question, will you help me get some numbers to Dublin, Teresa? Yes. My question. Will you help me look for Bartholomew now? Uh, yes. But I can't just now. I have to mind the pub. Your mother is here. Call her. Go on. Mammy. I don't think she can. Louder. Mammy. What in the name of God? What's wrong? Nothing. I... I'm going to memorise numbers for Tomas. And in exchange, he's helped me look for my cat. Because we know each other now. You can mind the pub, Bridget. Come on, Tomas. Tomas? It's nothing, I just... He's very kind. Isn't he? You go on, Teresa. I send Tomas out after you in a minute. Granto. What was that about? Nothing. You expect me to believe that? Memorising numbers. It's just... It's just nothing. You little... Jesus... Teresa is not like you and me. She's not like anyone else in this town. Can I go now? I see the people you call friends and I don't like them. I wouldn't be too mad on your friends either, Mammy. Now don't you be so smart. You know what I'm saying. You've always been a decent lad. Don't compromise that. It was just... I'm only looking for a cat, Mammy. If you say so. I do. I promise. Then go. Oh my God, will it ever end? Oh, hello, Mossy. I didn't know you and this gentleman were down there. What would you like? Uh, Two whiskies. One for me and one for Podrick. Uh, 
Do you know Padraig, missus? Can't say I do. Hello, Padraig. Missus. Padraig knows Sean, don't you, Padraig? I do, indeed. Sean threatened him once down at the railway, didn't he, Padraig? He did. That'll be... Now you'll hardly charge me for that, will you? And why wouldn't I charge you? Oh, I think we all know why. Let's just say you'll be hoping that Theresa's cat's got my tongue. Oh, dear God. Fractured is a Down at Heel production. All episodes were written by Joe Bergen, Brendan Farrell, Claire Joyce and Martina Riley. Sound engineer is Brendan Farrell. Fractured is supported by Kildare County Council through a bursary from Creative Ireland. It is also supported by the County Kildare Decade of Commemorations Programme and the Department of Tourism, Culture, Arts, Gaeltacht, Sport and Media under the Decade of Centenaries 2012-2023 to initiative.